I've built a six-figure company before the age of 20. I've been recognized by the Scottish Government as one of this country's most talented, promising entrepreneurs. I get invited to speak at events and conferences all across the world as an industry expert. My friends, they look at me and they think that my life is perfect. But what if I told you the truth? What if I told you that I wake up every single morning and I feel like a fraud? I feel like I don't deserve any of the success that I've had. I feel that it's all down to luck. I feel that I shouldn't be in this entrepreneurship game. I simply feel like I don't belong. I'm gonna ask everyone in the audience here today to be brave and vulnerable for just one moment. Raise your hand if you've ever felt like this, felt that you simply don't belong. Look around you, everyone's in the same boat. Imposter syndrome, the feeling that we're not worthy of success, not striving for our goals because we feel we don't deserve to reach them. We've all been imposters at some point in our life. Our first day at a new job, starting a new business, going head to head with industry experts. Those networking events we go to, where we don't know a single person in the room and it feels like we're trying to be someone we're not. I've been there, it's a horrible feeling. I'm Aditya, I'm a second year student here at the university. I've got the grave, grave misfortune of doing an economics degree. And I've been building my company for the past two years now. If I'm being honest, I don't want to be here right now. I debated with myself for months whether or not I want to come and stand on a stage in a room filled with strangers, no offense, and admit that I feel like an imposter, admit that I feel like a fraud. It's a vulnerable feeling, it's a vulnerable topic, and I've got no reason of doing this. You've all just heard how great my life is. I'm crushing it. <laughs> but I still battle imposter syndrome every single day. I've got friends that battle imposter syndrome every single day. It affects their mental health. It affects my mental health. And maybe, maybe for some of you in the audience, it affects your mental health. And that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm doing this talk. Because if I can help one person, if I can change one person's life, if I can have just one of you leave here today and go and pursue your dreams and passions and not be held back by imposter syndrome, then this talk is a resounding success. I started my company when I was 17. I didn't know what I was doing. I was making it all up on the spot. Every morning I woke up, I felt lost. I felt like an imposter. And maybe that's how some of you in the audience feel today. Maybe there's a business that you want to start, but you feel underqualified. A new job you want to apply for, but you feel you're lacking the right skill set. A new sport you want to start playing, but you're worried you won't be good enough. And so, you never take that first step. But for one second, for just one second, imagine you do. And that new business is thriving, you're crushing it. That new job, you're inspiring other people to follow in your footsteps. You are an inspiration. And that new sport, you can't think of a single reason why you didn't start earlier. I'm not here to mislead or misguide anyone into thinking I'm the next David Goggins or Tony Robbins or whatever motivational speaker you guys listen to. I'm not here to make jokes about carrying logs and boats because that's not me. I still feel like an imposter. But I've managed to achieve everything I have despite my imposter syndrome. I've got to where I am today in spite of my imposter syndrome by following three simple steps. Because that's all you need, three fundamentals, three key principles, three key tenets to overcoming imposter syndrome and following your true passion in life. Key tenet number one is changing your self-perception. Imposter syndrome is deadly. Imposter syndrome makes us feel like we're not worthy of reaching our goals. Imposter syndrome lies to us. So the first thing we need to do to beat imposter syndrome is change those limiting self-perceptions. How many of you guys are familiar with this quote? How many of you agree with this quote? Everyone that just put your hands up, you're wrong. You're all wrong. 
because the effect of the people we surround ourselves with goes so far beyond just five people. If I say to you that the people you surround yourself with are who we become, your friends really are your future. There was a study done recently, and it showed the effects of our friends and family and whether or not we gain weight. Did you guys know that if a close friend of yours becomes obese, the probability that you put on weight is 40%. Makes sense, right? My friend Joe here that's just joined us, if we go on a night out, Joe, if you say to me, let's go to shawarma, how am I meant to pretend that's not a great idea? But here's what I found crazy. If a friend of a friend, someone you don't know, someone you've never met, if a friend of a friend puts on weight and becomes obese, do you know the probability that you also gain weight? Who thinks it's under 10%? Yeah, under 5%? It's 21%. Isn't that crazy? The effect goes beyond one person. Because your friends, the friends of your friends, these are the people that form and dictate our self-perception. Everyone in this room today wants to change their life. You're at a TED Talk, right? So I've got a challenge for all of you. It will take five minutes a day, but if you do this for one month, I guarantee every single one of you that it will change your life. I want you all to be very conscious of who you spend your time with. Who do you eat with, work with, hang out with, chill with, sleep with? Maybe not sleep with, but you see my point here. Who do you spend your time with? Look at these people, look at their values, their character, their drive, ambition. And if I tell you in two years' time, this is what your life will look like, can every single one of you that are here today to change your life, can you all look me in the eye and tell me, Aditya, I am 100% okay with that? Because if the answer is no, you've got a problem. Because these are the people that dictate your future. Now, you might be asking me, fair enough, where do I find these people? First of all, keep your critics close. Don't be afraid of having friends that tell you no, of having friends that tell you when you're wrong. Have a best friend that's going to play devil's advocate at every decision you make, because this, this is how we grow. Leverage online communities. It's the people we talk to on a daily basis that change and form our self-perception. So why limit yourself to the people in this room? Why limit yourself to people in St. Andrews? Find people in different countries, continents, people on the same mission as you, people that share your values, people that you can keep accountability with, form groups with, because this is how you can keep yourself accountable. And third, let your passions ignite. To meet people that share your passion, go to the places you're passionate about. If that's health and wellness, go and talk to people in the gym. If that's entrepreneurship, go to those networking events and push yourself out of your comfort zone. For whatever reason, if you guys want to pursue public speaking, wouldn't recommend it, but you're in the right room, well done. Right, before moving on to key tenant number two, I want to ask everyone here a fairly personal question. How many of you guys are in a relationship? Well, there's someone in my life that's very special to me, and I want to introduce you guys, because without this person, I wouldn't be where I am today. We've been together about two years, two and a half years now, and I can honestly say I owe this person a lot. This is Sue. Sue is my mentor. Because key tenet number two is all about forming the right self-perception, and the way to do this is working with a mentor someone that's reached success in whatever you're trying to do. When I started my company, the first thing I'd done was I looked at my network and I saw who had reached success in the influencer space, and I reached out to Suet. Ever since then, Suet's been mentoring us, ensuring we learn from his mistakes, we build on his success, and get to that success in half the time. And I can stand here, I can stand here in front of all of you put my hand in my heart and admit that I owe Sue it everything. And that's what it means to have a mentor. That's why it's so important to find the right mentor. And again, you might be asking me, Aditya, fair enough, how do I do this? Well, first of all, 
identify your short and long-term goals, define this concept of success, and then find the people that have reached this success. Find the people that are four or five years ahead of you in their journey that can identify and resonate with where you are now, that know what it takes to get past this stage and reach their level. And then reach out to them. Have a very clear ask. Why should they mentor you? What is it about you? Is it your drive, determination? Is it a personal narrative of sort? Why do you want to be mentored by this person? What is it about them that inspires you and motivates you and makes you want to be the best version of you? And finally, be a good mentee. Set aside time on a weekly, monthly, or even an annual basis to talk to your mentor, to show them the progress you've made, to show them the effect that their mentorship is having on you. And don't stop at just one mentor. Keep on building this, this board of mentors, this advisorship committee, so that they can help you in whatever you decide to pursue in life. Okay, so we're changing our self-perception, key tenet number one. We're forming the right self-perception, key tenet number two. Now what? Now's the fun part, because now you get to show off to the rest of the world this new, better, bolder version of you. And the way to do this is through personal branding. Every single one of you in this room can and should have a personal brand. If you're a musician, it might be a content showcase of you playing at gigs and concerts. If you're a photographer, it might be your portfolio showing your best pieces of work, showing the talent you have that other people don't possess. I've been coaching people and building personal brands for a few months now, and there's one misconception that everyone seems to have. People seem to think that a personal brand is going on LinkedIn, having an account, not posting any content, and simply watching what everyone else does. No, that's called being a stalker. Because a personal brand is to show the expertise and knowledge you possess that other people don't. So to build this personal brand, identify the niche, first of all. Is it gaming? Is it music? Is it entrepreneurship? Is it dating? Whatever it is, identify the niche and then start providing value. Because I can guarantee that everyone here has at least one topic where they have knowledge, where they have experience that others can benefit from. So post about this knowledge. Have a unique tone of voice. If someone looks at your content, they should be able to identify with it and resonate with it as being part of your personal brand. Finally, be consistent. Keep on posting content until people start to identify you as an industry leader, as a thought leader. For me, this has meant posting on LinkedIn four times a week about influencer marketing for the past two years now. Do I enjoy doing this? No. Is this what I want to spend my hungover Sunday mornings doing, typing away at a laptop while my head's pounding? No. But this personal brand has brought in thousands of pounds of revenue, podcast appearances, invitations to travel across the world as a, con a speaker at conferences. This personal brand has got me to where I am today. People now consider me a thought leader. I don't even know what that means. How can you read thoughts? I'm up here talking to you guys. No one should be letting me do this. But that's what happens when you have a personal brand. Before I finish today, I want to leave you guys with a very quick story about why imposter syndrome means so much to me. When I was young, I only had one dream. I wanted to be a professional cricketer. And I worked hard for this. Every single day, I worked hard for this dream. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't party. Every weekend, I worked towards my dream. And yeah, when I was 14, I made the Scotland under 15 team. And then, the Scotland under 16 team. And then, the Scotland under 17 team. And then, and then I quit. And then I let my imposter syndrome tell me, Aditya, you're not good enough. Aditya, you don't belong there. Aditya, you've got no future in this game. There's not a day that goes by now where I don't regret that decision. There's not a day that goes by where I don't sit and wonder, what if? What if I could have applied myself all the information that I've just given you guys? What if I built the right network of other cricketers 
who can motivate and inspire me? What if I found a mentor, someone that could tell me it's okay to feel like this and advise me on how to get past it? What if I built a personal brand to showcase my skills and leverage it to get more opportunities? But I didn't, and I'll never know. But for all of you guys here today, you can take this framework and apply it to beat imposter syndrome. You can change your self-perception through your network. You can build the right self-perception through working with a mentor. You can build a personal brand to leverage your skills and experience. So if there's one thing that I want to leave you guys with today, it's this. Go for it. If there is that business you want to start, but you're worried that you're underqualified, go for it. If you want to apply for a new job, but you're worried you've not got the right skill set, go for it. If you want to start a new sport, but your friends call you crazy, who cares? Go for it. Because our brain, our brain has this nasty ability of making us feel like we're not worthy of achievement, that we don't deserve success. But sometimes, just sometimes, you'd be so amazed by what we can achieve if sometimes we just went for it. Thank you.